guys, welcome back to The Aspiring Home Cook. My name is Trisha and today you're in a slightly different location. Yes, we've moved house and this is going to be the new digs of The Aspiring Home Cook for a while now. Today's video is going to be a slightly different one. I keep getting questions about the kinds of pans that I use for my cooking videos and in my recipes and I just figured it would be easier both for me and for you to walk you through the pans that I use in a video dedicated specifically to this. So if you're ever looking for information on any of the pans that you see in the videos, here's where you're likely to find the information pertaining to those pans. Now, over the last few weeks and months, as a matter of fact, I've had a lot of questions about the cast iron pans that I use. If you've seen some of my older videos, I did have a few non-stick pans. However, I have phased them out completely and I have discontinued using them purely for health reasons. Now do your own research, use what works for you. This is what works for me and my family and I thought I'd share that information with you. Now before we head into the video and before I take you through all of the pans that I have and use, if you're new here and if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to my channel. And once you do, don't forget to click on that little bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. So let's go straight ahead and take a look at the pans that I use. Just a little disclaimer, this video hasn't been sponsored by any of these companies or stores. These are all pans that I've purchased over the last couple of years using my own resources. Now, I basically used two different types of pans, my cast iron pans and my stainless steel pans. I'll take you through the cast iron ones before because those are just a couple of pans and we can get through that quickly before we get into the details of the steel pans. Luckily for me, I happen to have the box that these cast iron pans came in. This is what it looks like. My cast iron pans are all the large ones. They're really sturdy. I've had them since last year and I literally use them every single day, multiple times a day. I absolutely love the way they work and how they cook food. Now this is, this brand may appear like it's slightly on the steeper side. Um, I'm looking at the little sticker here. I bought this while it was in sale. It was down from $299.95, that is Australian dollars, down to $89. Now this is something that I picked up from Victoria's basement here in Sydney. They tend to have some really good deals ever so often, so keep an eye out if you're in the market for cookware, kitchenware, that kind of thing. So this set came with three pans all together. One's a 10 and 10.25 inch or a 26 centimeter cast iron skillet. One's an 8 inch skillet and this is my 10 and a half inch griddle pan. Now this pan is what I typically use to make all of my rotis, chapatis, parathas, flatbread, pancakes and dosas. I have never had a single dosa go funny on me, stick to the pan or any such thing. Now in the past I have used my non-stick pans for these purposes and every single time the first couple of pancakes and dosas tend to get a little funky and stick to the base of the pan. However, I have never had trouble with this one. So I'd say this as a purchase was well worth it for me. I've recently had questions about how things cook and about the cleaning and maintenance of these cast iron pans. Now the cleaning and maintenance couldn't be easier. There's a couple of steps involved and you'll find loads of resources on the internet and you'll have some that come through with your pan as well from the manufacturer telling you how best to take care of these. Once you've seasoned your pans right, literally nothing will stick to this. Now when you're looking at frying things up and even if you're doing like a little bit of a stir fry and things like that, you get a beautiful car caramelization on your vegetables or whatever it is that you're cooking up. It does take a little while to heat up, however these pans retain heat really well and cook all of the ingredients in the pan much more uniformly than any of the pans that I've had in the past. So for me, yes, it's cast iron all the way. 
as far as I can help it. Of course, I don't make my curries and I don't make anything with an acidic sauce, like a pasta sauce and things like that in this pan. For those, I use my stainless steel pans because it's pretty simple. I mean, that acid could potentially react with the metal in the pan and I want these pans to last me a long time. So taking care of it the best way I know how is one way to ensure that. Now this particular set also comes with a little silicone pot holder, your pan handle holder and a couple of these scrapers to clean up the pans. So I found that it worked really well for me. Everything was in that one box and I was ready to go with this. So I'm going to leave a link to this particular set down in the description box below. So those were the cast iron pans. Let's now move on to the stainless steel pans. Now these are all the stainless steel pans that I have. I'll come to these two a little later. We'll start off with the, just the generic pans. Now I'm not much of a brand snob as far as just the name of a product goes, but a lot of times you get what you pay for. So with things like cookware, I believe it's better to pay a little more upfront and have a particular product last you a lot longer rather than have to just keep on repurchasing every now and then. So with that said, the first pan is this handy dandy one. I use this for a lot of my vegetables, stir fries and things like that. This one is part of the Scan Pan Access series. I'll leave a link again in the description box below for you. It's a nice convenient size, especially when you're looking at smaller portions of food. This one here was an absolute surprise. I just bought this on a whim. This is a little cheapy from my local Kmart. I think I distinctly remember paying about $18 for it and I cannot tell you how happy I was with it. I was pleasantly surprised with the quality of this particular pan. The third pan that I have is this one. This is a chasseur. I hope I'm saying that right. This is a slightly sturdier one. Again, it was a little pricier than the other ones. It's a copper bottom pan and all of these pans come with their own individual lids. I just haven't taken them all out for the purposes of this video. It took a couple of attempts to get things going with this pan. So my first couple of batches of food really stuck to the bottom of it. But I think it was more of more a matter of me getting used to the kind of heat that's required for this particular pan. But since then, I've not had any trouble with it. I quite enjoy using this one, especially when the recipe makes a little more than what I can fit in the other two. Moving on to my wok. If you love Asian food as much as we do, you pretty much will own a wok of some type or the other. I've had a different one in the past and it was a hard anodized one. The shelf life was not as long as I would have liked it to be. So when I spotted this one again at Victoria's basement, I knew I had to get one of these. This again was bought while they had the mid-year or end of year sale, I'm not very sure. Again, if I can find a link, I will leave that link below. This one is part of the Scampan Satin range. It holds a fairly large quantity, so it's perfect for larger batches of fried rice, of stir fried noodles and things like that. Now with these stainless steel pans, I have to tell you, cleaning up is an absolute breeze. I've never really had to sit and scrape bits of food off. Just what I typically do is I just leave it to soak in a little bit of water for a little while and the stuck on food or whatever it might be that was cooked in it just happens to come, just comes right off. So that's my wok. And I've intentionally left this one to the last. This pan has been the subject of questions that I can't even begin to count. I've had so many questions on this particular pan. If you're one of my lovely viewers that have asked for information on this pan, pay attention. I've already spoken about this pan in my previous Christmas sweets or Kuswar videos, but I'm going to take you through that information all over again today. This particular pan is a KitchenAid pan. I love, love, love this pan dearly. Again, this is not a sponsored video, but I don't think I'd be able to go through Christmas with my sanity in place if it was not for this particular pan. I've also got some snarky comments in the past telling me that this is not a stainless steel pan and it's an aluminium pan. So I'm going to show you what the back of this pan says. It reads as KitchenAid Durable Stainless Steel. This is a fairly heavy pan and I don't believe they carry this pan anymore. I've tried to link this pan in my previous videos. They don't have a pan like this at this moment. 
That being said, I do have a few KitchenAid pots as well and all of them have the have the same excellent quality. So if you're looking for pans and if you have access to KitchenAid cookware, I really wouldn't go past them. This one's an absolute workhorse. Because of the surface area of this pan, the cooking time required for all those traditional go and Christmas sweets, your milk cream, your mazapan, your guava cheese, your perad, all of that is cut down drastically. I've had questions about how thick it is. I really don't know if I remember correctly, this particular pan was bought in 2013, I'd say, and it's perfect. I couldn't ask for anything better. It has paid for itself multiple times over, just helping me through the holiday season. So guys, those were the pans that I use in my kitchen. I hope that you've managed to take away some information from there. I hope I've covered all of the information that you were hoping to get from a video like this. If you have any questions whatsoever, anything that I may have missed out, please leave those questions in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. So to sum up, stainless steel, cast iron, both of them have their own pros and cons. The one thing that I would say holds people back from cast iron is it tends to be a slightly heavier pan than your typical non-stick or stainless steel pans, but it's well worth the effort if you can work your way around that. Would I go back or switch out from any of these pans? I don't think so. I think for me personally, I will continue using those cast iron pans and I will continue using these stainless steel pans as well. I don't see anything going wrong with these pans anytime soon unlike a non-stick pan where you know the coating comes off and there's scratches to the base of the pan that could cause problems and other things like that. I don't foresee anything like that with these pans at least. So that's about the pans that I use. I hope you enjoyed today's video. It's a little different I know. If you did don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you have any other requests feel free to leave that down in the comment section below. I hope you found this video helpful. All right, I'll see you really soon with another video. So till then, take care. Bye.